today I wanted to cover off the different raid levels that we offer, um, some of the more popular ones, um, even some of the ones we normally wouldn't recommend, um, and basically give you a, a base overview of what the expected capacity will be um, to try and help you pick the right amount and right size of drives. Um, some people do get um, a bit surprised when um, they buy a drive of a certain size and then when they put it into the NAS, it's not the advertised size. Um, so I wanted to cover off why that is, um, and we'll go through and set up a bunch of RAID modes. Um, for this uh, video, I'm using our TVS uh, H1288X, um, and I am running it in QUTS Hero um, uh, mode at the moment, uh, simply because it's a bit quicker at doing RAID builds and RAID rebuilds and things, and most people would use that OS on this NAS. Um, but in this NAS, I've got uh, two M.2 SSDs just working as the system drive. Um, I'm not going to use those for the demo. Um, to make the maths nice and easy, down here I've got eight drives, and they're all 10 terabytes. Um, so you'd think straight out the bat that's that's going to be 80 terabytes of data with the eight 10 terabyte drives. Uh, one thing I want you to look at is down the bottom here where it says disk capacity, 10 terabytes in brackets, but 9.1 terabytes um, outside the brackets. Um, so drive makers uh, tend to um, advertise the drives in their, um, let's say, decimal uh, sizes. Um, but most operating systems, including ours, uh, use binary. And when you do the sort of decimal to binary conversion, um, it does drop off. So like a four terabyte drive would usually come up as something like 3.6 uh, terabytes. Um, when you get all the way up to the biggest drives available today, which is the 22 terabyte drives um, as of mid-March 2023, um, they're actually coming up close to 20 terabytes available. So the bigger the drives are getting, the more noticeable um, the, the decimal to binary conversion is, is having. Um, but so straight out the gate here, what we're seeing is we've lost almost a terabyte off, off this 10 terabyte drive um, just for the conversion. We haven't done anything to the drive yet. You can see here they're all purple, they're free, they're not being used for anything. Um, so the 10 doesn't actually mean 10. Um, so that's one, one thing out the way there. Um, so what I'm going to do with all these drives, so these are just some Toshiba 10 terabytes. I'm going to go down to the storage slash snapshot section, and I'm going to create a, a bunch of storage pools. So I'll create one, and then I'll delete it after each one, so you can see uh, what the different um, available capacity will be. Um, so if I go create new storage pool, um, just click next here. Um, so here I see all the disks, so it's all eight disks. And I'm going to tick the box at the top for this so that we can add... Um, all the drives into the list. So if I take that, it's going to select all the drives. And for the first one, I'm going to choose RAID 0, the one at the top of the list. Uh, so RAID 0, I traditionally wouldn't recommend it because it offers absolutely no redundancy. Um, if one drive fails, you will lose the data of all drives. Um, the reason some people still choose this and why it's on offer is it is the absolute fastest RAID mode that there is. It's using the max performance of all drives all at once. Um, so it's effectively striping the data um, evenly across all the drives, filling them up evenly. Um, so when you uh, write data to them, it's it's going in evenly across all of them rather than filling up one, then moving on to the next one and so on. Uh, so RAID 0 does have its benefits, um, but it's very important to make sure you're doing a lot of backups um, off, off a system running with that type of setup. Uh, so here it's giving us an estimated capacity of 70.5 terabytes. Um, so that's a good indication right now. So if I click next with that, it gives us some extra options. Now for all these ones, I'm going to untick the optimized performance at the top, just because every time I create one, it's going to do a three minute optimizing the performance. So when I don't need it, I'm, I'm deleting it right away. So I'll untick that. That doesn't affect the capacity. You can see it's still 49 terabytes, whether it's ticked or not. But down here, we've got a few options. Now, some people will just click next here without changing anything and wonder why their capacity has dropped drastically from um, the predicted amount on the previous screen. Uh, so what this is, things like pool over provisioning, there's a little uh, eye pop out here that lets you um, read what that is. Um, so it's basically going to reserve some space, block it off um, so that it uh, can maintain um, SSD performance and increase the SSD's lifespan. Um, we're not using SSDs here, so that part's not important, but it, the, the, the performance side of things definitely is sometimes. Um, for me, what I'm going to do for each of these is I'm going to untick all of these so that we can see it's only the top two boxes here that are going to make a difference. So if I untick pool over provisioning, we'll see this number jump up. So 49 terabytes right now, it's jumped up to 56. 
Uh, the next option is uh, pool guaranteed snapshot space. So this is going to block off some area of the storage um, to be reserved so that there's always space for snapshots to happen. Uh, you can change this number. You can go up and down in different percentages. Um, but if you untick it completely, we're going to go up to the full capacity. Um, so I'll set that up and I'll click next. Happy with those choices. It's going to be eight disks in RAID 0, all eight disks there. So we'll click create. Um, OK, that confirming everything's going to be erased. Um, and then we'll see um, in the background here, we'll see it start, be start to be created and we'll see the capacity that's on offer. Um, so this is RAID 0. Again, normally don't recommend it. There are certain instances where you may want to use it where absolute max performance is needed. Um, so long as you're doing backups to something else, it, it can be an option for some people. So there we go, 70.69 terabytes available there. Um, so that's that's RAID 0, so now we'll we'll get rid of the RAID 0, so I'll just manage the, uh, the pool, go here to remove pool. It's going to ask me to type the password again, just to be absolutely sure I know what I'm doing, and I'm definitely doing this on purpose. Uh, so we'll delete uh, the RAID 0 that was created there, so that the drives become free again, which will allow me to um, use them again for another RAID mode. So the next RAID mode I'll choose uh, will probably be RAID 10, I think. So if I go Create, New Storage Pool, I'll do exactly the same as I did before, tick all the boxes, but this time I'm going to do the drop down to RAID 10. Uh, so RAID 10, um, more commonly known as RAID 1 plus 0, um, is effectively a mirror of the data, um, whilst also striping at the same time. So it's a mirror and a stripe. So um, it's RAID 1, which is mirroring. So in this scenario, if I chose RAID 1, um, pretty much everything that I do through on disks 1 through 4 will also happen on disks 5 through 8. So it's going to do an exact mirror of the data. Um, with RAID 10, it's going to split it a little differently. Um, so it's going to send the data um, equally to pairs of drives effectively um, throughout the array. So you're still going to have the same amount of space available, but a little bit less redundancy, but the performance will be higher. Uh, we can see here that the estimated total capacity here is 35.25 terabytes, about half of what RAID 0 has got because it's a mirror. Everything you're doing on four disks is effectively happening on the other four disks, so you're not using the other four disks for capacity. They're there for protection of your data. Uh, so here we'll click Next. Again, I'm going to untick the boxes. So with the boxes ticked here, um, the the 10% and 20% things are obviously a smaller percentage now because the um, the total amount of space before was about 70 terabytes. Now the total amount of space is about half that. So uh, the performance hit's not so huge. So if I untick those again, it's gone back up to the 35 terabytes. So I'll click Next, and we can see here how it's set that up. Uh, so basically pairs of disks, so disks 1 and 2, um, uh, and disks 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7 and 8, they're all paired together. Um, so it's going to uh, send the data. Anything done on, say, disk 1 is going to also happen on disk 2. Anything on disk 3 is also going to happen on disk 4 and so on. Um, but effectively, uh, disks 1, 3, 5 and 7 are the ones you're going to be using. 2, 4, 6 and 8 are going to be the sort of hidden from view ones. They're there for the redund redundancy of the data. Uh, so I'll click uh, OK on that one. Um, again, just a warning, it's going to erase everything on the drives, which I'm OK with. Um, so RAID 10 is going to get set up now. Um, but again, the capacity is going to be about half because it's uh, using half the drives uh, for, for redundancy protection. Uh, so we can see that's been created there at 35.31. Uh, so this time I'll, I'll delete that one off again. Exactly the same, no matter what the RAID mode, it's the same way to get rid of them again. And you can see how fast it is doing this uh, with uh, QUTS Hero, uh, moving between the different RAID modes. Um, so it's very easy to, to, to experiment with different things that will work with uh, your setup before you actually spend the time to put all the data into the NAS. Uh, so this time I'm going to create um, one of the more popular RAID modes, but I'll do a little twist on it. Um, and that's going to be RAID 5. Uh, so again, I'm going to tick um, all the disks. So they're all ticked, but then I'm going to untick the last one, disk 8. Um, so here with RAID 5, I want to do RAID 5 with a hot spare. So depending whether you're using QTS or QUTS Hero, this might be done a little differently. Uh, with QUTS Hero, I'm going to untick um, the last disk so that I can keep a drive free. Uh, so I'm going to click Next. Um, so I can see here, estimated unallocated space is 36.54. Now remember, I've got one drive taken out of that. 
Um, if I untick the pool over provisioning and enable pool guaranteed space like before, we've got 52.29 terabytes. So that's fine. Happy with that. Seven disks. And I'm going to click create. Um, but this time, once it's created, I'm actually going to go in and um, edit the pool. And then I'm going to attach um, the eighth disk to it as a spare. Um, now, what a spare will do is in the event of one of those seven disks failing, um, it's going to let me um, automatically assign in the other disk. It's like swapping out a disk, but it's done for you immediately at the second of one of your primary disks failing. Um, so it can get on with the task of rebuilding the RAID. Uh, so here, if you manage the, the pool, you can go action at the top. And then you can see there's an option here for configuring sp uh, pool spare disks. So I'm going to tick that and we'll see that I've got to select at least one disk and there is one free because I didn't use it in the main creation. So now I can click apply. I'm just confirming that that data on that disk will be erased. Um, so it's asking if I want to enable the uh, smart migration. So I'm going to say enable and click close. Um, so now what I've done is I do actually have a pool there with um, eight disks, um, but effectively I'm only using seven of them um, because it's uh, RAID 5 but with a hot spur. So you can see that in the list now. So I've got my RAID 5 made up of my seven disks, um, but then I've got the eighth one. So if one of those first seven fails, um, the eighth one is going to jump in in its place and start the rebuild process. So that's especially good if you're using this, say, in a business environment, uh, happens on a Saturday at three o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, the IT guy will probably get an alert that this has happened. Uh, he can check his phone, but he'll be able to see that the uh, raid is rebuilding without his intervention. So he knows on Monday he can come in and just swap out that failed disk. So let's say disk three was the one that's failed. He can just put that spare disk uh, back in uh, to replace the, uh, the one that's failed. Um, but by then, hopefully the array has completely rebuilt itself and everything is, is golden again. So absolutely no problem doing that. Uh, but that's how you would do a hot spare. Uh, so we would call this sort of RAID 5 plus 1, if effectively. So it's it's with a hot spare. Um, so we'll we'll remove that one and then we'll move on to um, the, the next RAID mode. So the next RAID mode is typically the one that I would want to use, uh, which is RAID 6. Now, you can't just use any RAID mode um, with any number of disks. So each RAID mode is um, dependent on an amount of disks. So you can't do a mirror, for example, with an odd number of disks. Uh, it might sound obvious, I guess, but just, just to explain it. So if I go through here, before I select RAID 6, we can see we've got the, uh, the set of disks. So if I tick it one by one, so I don't really have many options when I tick uh, one disk. If I tick a second disk, well, I've now got RAID 0 and RAID 1. If I tick a third disk, RAID 1 has disappeared because it's an uneven number of disks. But I've got different options here of RAID 0, 0 5, and a triple mirror with ZFS. Um, so RAID 5 um, needs a minimum of three disks. With four disks, it'll give us the option for RAID 6. And because we're now back uh, to an even number of disks, we've now gone to allow a mirroring mode. So in this case, it would be RAID 10. Um, and then as you keep adding different uh, levels of disks, um, the modes just keep in increasing to different levels of, of disks that you, that you may want to use. Um, so that's the, uh, the different options we've got there. Um, so RAID 6 is the one I generally prefer to use on, on most of my setups. So here with RAID 6, um, I've got all eight disks ticked. It's telling me we're going to have 52 terabytes available. So compared to, say, RAID 5, which would have said 61 terabytes if I'd have selected all the disks. Um, it's saying 52 terabytes, so I'll click Next. Again, I'll untick the boxes so we can see here 36.54 if I leave uh, the over-provisioning and guaranteed space. I can untick those and click Next and click Create. Um, if you decide later, um, if you did leave those boxes ticked um, where it says um, you know, pool guaranteed space, things like that. If you decided you don't actually want it at a later date, you'd rather have the capacity freed up for data. It is a setting you can change later. You don't have to delete everything to do that. So here, if I go into manage again, um, before I delete this RAID 6 setup here, which has given me 52.63 terabytes, uh, you've got an action drop down here where you can say configure pool guaranteed space or configure the pool over provisioning. You can go back and change these settings later. It's not um, a decision that had to be made at the start. You can go and change it later if you want to. Okay, so I'll remove the pool of RAID 6. 
So confirm that. I'm going to type the password again. So we'll get rid of that. And then we'll do one final uh, raid mode here. Uh, this time we'll choose raid 50. So very much like uh, raid 10. Um, the second uh, you add that zero on there, it's about a performance improvement. So we're, we're adding some striping into the mix. Uh, so if, you're, if I do a new storage pool, click next, tick all the disks again. But this time I'm going to choose RAID 50. Uh, so it's going to have two subarrays. So effectively you're going to have two sets of RAID 5, but they'll be joined together as a stripe. Uh, so it's estimating we'll have 52.50, which actually matches up pretty well with RAID 6. Because um, effectively you've got two drives worth of capacity being used for the protection, uh, whether it's RAID 6 or RAID 50. It's just RAID 50 um, has a bit of a performance enhancement on it. Uh, so here we'll do RAID 50. Again, 36.54, we'll untick the boxes, and it's gonna jump up to the 52.29. And we'll see how it's gonna set those up here. So disks one, two, three, and four are their own RAID 5. Disks five, six, seven, eight, again is its own RAID 5, but they're gonna be joined together as a RAID 50. And we'll see what that looks like once it creates it, um, when we go manage the storage pool. So you'll see that at the top of the, the heading, it will say RAID 50. Uh, but then it will show you what it's made up from. So we'll just wait for that to say ready here. So this one takes a little bit longer because it's effectively creating uh, two raids at the same time. There we go. So here we click manage. And then we'll scroll down. So here you can see we've got the two RAID 5, so they're RAID 50 subarrays. RAID 5, RAID 5, first four disks, second four disks, and that's how it's come to be um, online with that setup. Uh, but that's given me 52.63 terabytes available in this setup. Um, so hopefully that's uh, given you some information about the, the different capacities that um, you will get depending on the, the amount of drives or the, the type of RAID mode you pick. Um, or any surprises you might get that once you set it up you thought you'd have a lot more space. It could be that you just had uh, something enabled on a volume. So here if I go and manage uh, this one that's saying I've got 52 terabytes, if I um, configure the pool guaranteed snapshot space and I set it for the 20%, um, click OK, we'll see that that 52 terabytes in the background is going to shrink away soon. Um, once it calculates that in, it's going to add the uh, the pool guaranteed space into it uh, so that uh, it's it's effectively consumed some of the space that's reserved for it. Um, but you can always go in and delete those items off later. So if you don't need the allocation for um, snapshots, you don't need the over-provisioning, things like that. If you don't want that uh, that data in there, uh, you can go and remove those options if you want to as well. Um, so that's the uh, different RAID modes that I wanted to talk about today. Um, again, this is um, ZFS. Um, for anybody looking for the sort of ZFS shortcuts uh, between them, um, ZFS would use different names for different things. So, uh, for example, uh, what we're calling RAID 5. Uh, with ZFS, it would normally be referred to as uh, RAID Z1. Um, RAID 6 would be RAID Z2. Um, so depending on the different modes you're using, um, ZFS does have a different naming convention. We chose to keep it uh, fairly uniform as with our, the rest of our products. Uh, so we just call it RAID 5, but effectively, you know, RAID 5 is RAID, RAID Z1. So uh, there's a lot of different uh, modes that you can call it within, within ZFS as well. Um, but that's that's the um, overview of everything I wanted to say. If anybody has any questions, wants to see um, capacity available with a different mix of drive sizes, different quantity of drives, different RAID modes, let us know. Um, I probably won't make another video about it, but I'll be able to answer in the comment section with what you'd be expected to get depending on uh, the different capacity options that we that we have available there. Uh, one of the most important things to remember though is the, the binary to decimal. The drives are generally advertised in a decimal capacity, but all the operating systems out there will generally use them as a binary capacity, which will lose some space. Uh, there are converters you can use out there that convert sort of TB to TIB. Uh, so TB would be what the drive makers advertise it in, but TIB is kind of how um, the, the drive makers, uh, how they, sorry, the operating systems are going to use it. Um, so thanks a lot for watching. Again, any questions, ask them down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot, bye.